So let's let's talk a little bit more. So Tuesday I discussed how a lot of this unfulfillment so many of us can relate to comes from just not having a sense of self. You know, I asked the question, who are you? You know, or I encourage you guys to ask yourself the question, who am I? Three simple words that I ask every client I see, every patient I see. And typically, as I said Tuesday, you get the same thing. People describe themselves according to roles or labels, you know, job descriptions. Um, but no one, very few people have a sense of the true essence of who they are, who they are. And this leads to a chronic sense of unfulfillment. And that's what we talked about, encouraging you guys to ask that question. So how many of you did ask that question last week? If you did, share it with me. You know, um, if you ask that question of yourself, who am I? Who are you? And what were some of the things that you came up with? Were you able to differentiate between the labels you have, maybe your career, your title, and really tune into just the core, the core of your soul, the core of your essence? You know, when I think about who am I, and this wasn't always the case, like I shared Tuesday, my own journey of transformation is what really helped me develop the seven steps that I present in my book, Bloom Seven Steps of Personal Transformation. But you know, right now I, I see myself when you say, Who are you? I I'm a I'm a a, a change agent, I, I believe. I'm a transformation specialist. You know, there's so much more to me than a mother, than a wife, than a sister, than a, you know, a daughter, than all of those other labels so many of us put on ourselves. And I want to encourage all of you guys to really dig deep and ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? So what some of the other reasons um, other than not knowing who you are um, or having a firm sense of the essence of who you are, what are some of the other things that get in the way of you feeling unfulfilled? And Executive Diva says, love it, transformation specialist. And I encourage you guys, please share with me. I'm asking you all that question now. There are several of you on this broadcast now. Who are you? Who are you? And, and put it out there. No right or wrong answer. It's just Really, we need to start getting this conversation going and having this dialogue to encourage you to really dig deep into who you are. So, not knowing who you are, that's one of the things that definitely could lead to unfulfillment. What's another thing? Another, I guess, tendency for so many of us in, in life that leads to unfulfillment is we're unfulfilled because we're tying our fulfillment to someone else. And what do I mean by that? We're tying our fulfillment to hoping that if this person only behaves this way, starts behaving this way, or stops behaving a certain way, then we'll be fulfilled. You know, so we're tying our fulfillment into a person or another person. I see those hearts coming because I know you guys can, we've all been guilty of it, can relate to it. Like I'll only be happy, you know, I will be happy when, let me put it like that. I'll be happy when he gets his act together. I'll be happy when he realizes how important I am in his life, you know, or the guys on the line. I'll be happy when she gets her act together or what have you. That is, and so many, so many of my clients have come in over the years are tying their fulfillment to someone else, tying their fulfillment to when this person gets their act together. And that's a very dangerous tendency because it leads to chronic unfulfillment. It leads to, you cannot create in another person's reality. Um, and thank you. I was getting there. See the executive diva been listening because I always say happiness is an inside job. It's an inside job, meaning it has to come within, within. It cannot be tied to someone else, you know, to an external person, external factors or things of that sort, or you'll always find yourself in a chronic just sense of unfulfillment. I um, In my book, I talk about some of you guys may have gone, if you, if you have ever gone to a bar and they have a sign up that says free beer tomorrow. And then if you go back the next day, the sign says free beer tomorrow. You go back the next day. The point is tomorrow never comes. The point is that as long as you keep tying your fulfillment to someone else, you it will always elude you. Happiness and fulfillment will always elude you. So I see, um, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your name right. Since I'm 37 years old, I started asking who I am at 32. I'm still working at that. That's okay. Because the good news, Amina, Amina, my friend in Quebec there. But Amina, the good news with that is that, you know, learning is a lifelong process. 
It's a lifelong process, but it should be exciting. It should be exciting. The only thing, and you say you started at 32, you're 37 now, as long as you're still in that process of discovering, because I'm discovering more and more about myself each and every day. The, 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 the problem comes when you become stagnant and, and just learning and discovering, um, and you feel like there's no movement. You know, Muhammad Ali said that the person who at the age of 50 still kind of have the same thoughts they did at the age of 20, they've wasted 30 years of their life. So the fact that you're asking yourself these questions, that you're challenging yourself, is a great thing. And I, I encourage you to keep it up, to keep it up definitely. And I see you're on the calls all every week, Transformation Tuesday. So the fact that you have that desire to learn more about yourself is telling me that, that you're sincere in this journey. So really tying yourself. Tying yourself, and you're welcome. Tying your, your, your fulfillment to another person, you have to be very careful and not to do that. I remember um, years ago reading um, somewhere where, where people so often try to create in everyone else uh, realities. Now, some of you ladies have heard me even talk about this before, ladies and gentlemen too, because men are guilty of it as well, but you know, most of my uh, clientele and audience is women, so I tend to, you know, lean a lot of my conversation toward you guys. But I, I always talk about this tendency, and I call it the Build-A-Bear tendency. Those of you who have kids, you know, if you've ever been to some of these malls that have a store called Build-A-Bear, you know, there's this, tent, there's, uh, you go there and you can get a shell of a teddy bear and you can stuff it and you can dress it up and you can give it a heart. You know, a lot of us, <laughs> we tend to do that in relationships as well. This whole Build-A-Bear mentality when it comes to relationships, wanting to build someone up or create and, and creating the perfect person for us. And we cannot create in another person's reality. The only reality we can create in is ours. So what I encourage you guys to do, you know, as far as you know, getting away from this tendency of tying your fulfillment to someone else is to remember, remember, fulfillment and happiness is an inside job, not to be tied to someone else. So what do you do? What do you do if, say, you're in a relationship? It can be a relationship, a marriage, whatever, um, and you're not fulfilled in it. Your, your role is not to try to change that person so you can be fulfilled. Your role is to get out there and connect. Connect with fulfillment in whatever way that is for you. And, and oftentimes what we have to do is learn to distract ourselves from this constant dialogue that we will have going on in our head about um, how much we need to change this person or getting into manipulation to change a person to create the, the situation, the ideal situation for yourself because that just becomes a very time-consuming, non-productive game um, that so many find themselves participating in all by themselves quite often, all by themselves. So hopefully this helps. This is the part two. So again, one of the, one of the things that that we discussed Tuesday as far as uh, reasons people feel unfulfilled goes back to not knowing who you are. Who am I? So what is it that you need to do to discover who you are? And I see, says, hello, Dr. Moulton. It's been a long time since I've been on your scope. Well, welcome back. Welcome back. Don't make it so long. I know it's been a, you know, I've been just kind of guilty of just doing the Tuesdays as well, but I've made a commitment to, you know, even after follow up with the Transformation Tuesday to give you guys just even more direction in the different Different topics I talk about. So when we talk about unfulfillment and rediscovering you and who you are, the things that you can do to rediscover yourself, sometimes you have to go back. Sometimes you have to go back to a time that you felt connected because oftentimes we, at early ages, we are connected and we kind of know our true nature and our personality and all that, but circumstances, community, culture, all of those things can really strip us of that if it doesn't go in, in alignment with what people think we should be or who we should be. So a lot of us have been guilty of foregoing our identity to make other people happy, make other people more comfortable. And this is where it has to end. And, and, it, and 
It doesn't matter if you've spent the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years doing this. It's never too late to reconnect and rediscover you, the true essence of who you are. So by doing that, or how do you do it? You do it by being honest, doing an honest inventory of your belief systems, of what you like, what you don't like, what it is that you've been kind of tolerating for years because society, like I said, or family, or friends tell you this is what you should tolerate. You know, it's, it's, it's time to just be an advocate for ourselves. So often we advocate for everyone else, but we are not advocating for ourselves. So it's time to advocate for your, your own happiness and your own fulfillment. So in my book, Bloom 7 Steps to Personal Transformation, I talk about specifics that you can do. And one of those specifics, and if you guys don't have the book, you can get it. You can download it on Amazon. If you have a Kindle for $1.99, you can purchase uh, the, the paperback version on Amazon as well or directly from my website because we send out autographed copies from my website as well. But there's, um, if you don't have the book, you can download chapter one for free by going to my website, www.drrosemolton.com. Yeah, I, for free, you get the whole chapter. Chapter one is the longest chapter of the book because it's the most important chapter. It talks about rediscovering you, but it talks about how important it is for you to connect again. A lot of us have disconnected with our true nature to connect with our true nature. I see you say you're reading the first chapter. Thank you. Love your feedback as well. Um, and, and when you connect with that true nature and you realize, okay, who am I? You ask that question and you start really doing an inventory and reconnecting with the true essence of who you are. It's amazing how much fulfillment you will start attracting in your life because there is nothing more unfulfilling than living a life uh, that's not authentic, living a life that's not in alignment with your true nature. And I tell the story in the first chapter of how for years, um, it just it, because for a lot of us, circumstances do that. For years, I was living outside of my true nature because of circumstances, because of situations. Um, and I did it well. I did it well. It wasn't authentic, but I did it well because anything we do often enough becomes a norm and we learn to do it well, even if it's not really right for us. And a lot of us are doing things day in and day out, routine, that we do quite well, but it's not truly us. And I had to really do an inventory and connect back to the true nature of who I am. Um, and you say, I have a major in philosophy for four years. I was being asked who I am, and that's okay, you know, that's a, that's what philosophers do, right? <laughs> and um, thanks, Executive Deaver says, preach, enlighten. But yeah, you know, it's it's just very unfulfilling to live a life of that's not authentic, um, inauthenticity, and, and we have to really just make a commitment to ourselves. That's the best gift you can give to yourself, is to make a commitment to live an authentic life. I'm coaching, I'm doing a um, next level you coaching. So I have a group of women that have committed nine months with me. Nine months, because it takes nine months to birth a baby, right? And these women are gonna be birthing a new baby, a new them when they're finished with this. And it's so exciting to just watch people, you know, group of women, connecting back to themselves. And for those of you who uh, didn't have an opportunity to join the group that we have going on now, there'll be more groups. I'll be starting another group mid-year. So you guys, and we do have people do it virtually. We have people all around the country that join the group. So we just um, tune them in while we're doing our group practice for the women who are here in the metropolitan Detroit area. But rediscovering you, so, so very important. I encourage you guys to go to my website, download it, download that chapter. Nurse 313 says, I'm asking myself who I am again now that my last child is headed off to college. I'm 49. Woohoo, girl. It's time for life to start for you. I'll be, I'll be 49 when my last child heads off to college. And I, you know, I'm thinking about it because it's only five years from now. And it's, and so that'll be the first time in Honestly, my adult life that I have not had the day-to-day -day responsibilities of being a parent. And, and while it's exciting to me because I have so much going on, I as the closer I get, I feel like you, Nurse 313. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to really, really start to redefine myself because that's going to leave a lot of just 
Trust me, <laughs> a lot of extra time, even though I'm busy, but we know parenthood and motherhood takes a lot. Um, but yeah, because so many Nurse 313 and those of you who are um, listening in, so many of us, we define ourselves by our labels of being a mother or a wife or a girlfriend or a daughter. And um, especially when we're caregivers, you know, we can lose ourselves in that role of caregiving. And that happens all too often. And those of us who may be in that sandwich generation where you're caring for kids and you're also caring for your parents as well, then that's even more, you know, labels that you're putting on yourself, caregiver, mother, daughter, you know, worker, what have you, business owner, all these different labels. And you can really get lost in that mix. So rediscovering you asking yourself who I am. And I want you guys, you know, if you haven't joined my In Full Bloom with Dr. Rose group on Facebook, join it because that's going to be the running question over the next several days. Who am I? And I want you guys to give that some thought. Read chapter one of the book, you know, that gives you some insight. That even helps you to understand where along the line um, of your development you may have lost touch with yourself. You may have lost connection with yourself and not even known it, not even have known it. Because again, for so many of us, it's circumstances, life circumstances, situations, um, just being encouraged not to be what comes most natural to us can really pull us away from ourselves. And it's time to reconnect because trust me, nothing feels as good as being you, unapologetically you. And this is the point at your life, like Nurse 313 says she'll be 49. I know a lot of us, you know, are in that age group of 30s to 40s. This is the time in our lives where we have to learn to be unapologetically ourselves, not apologizing for what we believe in, what we hold true to us. There was someone who put a quote up recently that said, with each new generation, we have to redefine what our truths are. Because what our truths were for our parents are not our truths for us necessarily because they lived in a different time and there are a lot of things that held true for them and rightfully so that no longer hold true for us but we're still living our lives based on these archaic outdated just what we consider norms that aren't getting us anywhere and it's time for us to reevaluate that reevaluate it and rediscover you and again, getting back to the second step for this part two of, you know, taking the un out of unfulfilled, stop it. Stop trying to create another people's reality. Stop trying to stop, stop this belief system that you need to change someone. You need to change someone to be um, a better person so you can be more fulfilled. That person has nothing to do with your fulfillment. Trust me. Trust me, uh, it's all about you. It's an inside job and it's time for you to take on this job, to tackle this job and, and, and do it and do it. Because if a person, if you don't feel a person is really, um, and the poochie is, he's just another baby here. This baby's not going anywhere. He, he has a, <laughs> several years left here with me. But um, if, if you know, if you are constantly in this state of someone's not good enough for you or you need to change this person, or this person needs to change their behavior and, and be more of this and realize to catch that you are, you really have to question how much you value yourself because we only attract what we are. So the, the fact of it, the truth is the more you put energy into changing someone else to be happy, the more unhappy you're going to become. If you focus on changing you, like I said, doing that evaluation of you, rediscovering who you are, living your life authentically, the only people you'll be able to attract and keep in your life are people who are going to represent that too. So someone who may not be your, you know, intended mate is going to just fall off and fall away. And that'll be okay. And someone says, what if that person is my mom with a smiley face? With a, that, but that's a very valid question because, again, part of this sense of being unfulfilled, like I said, can be, live, can be due to living a life where so many people, and it can be your parents as well, have really encouraged you not to be your authentic self or you find yourself being in that presence with that person doesn't feel good and and I always say and this goes for family too this goes for mothers this goes for sisters brothers any family member some people are better kept in your prayers than your presence 
okay, your prayers and your presence. And we have to learn again to not connect our fulfillment to these individuals. Now with your mom and people like that, you know, family members, we know there are times that we're going to need to be in their presence, have to be in their presence, but you really have to at this point just really key into attracting people in your life that are going to be more representative of who you are. And when that happens, so I want you to listen to this. A young lady just asked that question. When you tap into the true essence of you, who you are, when you tap into the authentic self, even those people who are in and around you who may kind of get under your skin, it won't even get under your skin that much because you're going to be on a whole different vibrational, energetic frequency. So that frequency won't even allow you to kind of get in that jet stream of despair with other people or, you know, uh, or a toxic jet stream that people may be in. You'll be on a whole nother level just flying off the, the, the vapors and fumes of your fulfillment and, and your feel good status. Um, so Valid question, valid question, son, and I thank you for asking that, and hopefully that helps. You're welcome. You're welcome again. So I want to encourage you guys to join me. I'll be broadcasting again um, this week, if not tomorrow. For, no, it'll be tomorrow because Friday I'll actually be having doing something else, but broadcasting again, talking about part three of Feeling Unfulfilled. Invite your friends, invite your family to tune in. This will be available. I'll make this available on YouTube as well so you can view this. Um, and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube page. Follow me um, on Facebook. Dr. Rose in Bloom is my Facebook page if you haven't joined that. And the Facebook group is uh, In Full Bloom with Dr. Rose. So thanks.